All right, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Voxango Span Spectrum Analyzer. It is a free plugin that is absolutely incredible, and I can't recommend it enough. And the link to download it will be in the description of this video. I want to just show you how cool this is and how helpful it is to have a visual representation to match your ears when you're mixing. Every engineer needs a good spectrum analyzer, and this is not a sponsored video, but let's dive right in here. And I want to tell you all about it, show you how it works, and show you how it can help you. So when you first open Span, it looks like this, and it is sizable. So in the bottom right corner, you can grab it with your mouse and drag it. And the first things I want to talk about are the meters. On the right, you have a nice peak meter. Let's hit play. Very useful to have. And on the bottom right, we have a nice correlation meter. And the correlation meter is very useful for looking at phase issues. So you'll see all the yellow and green on the right of the zero mark down here. And at any point, if you have anything dipping to the left of there, you know you might have some potential phase issues to look at. But if you don't want the meters up and running, up here is hide meters and they go away. And all right. Now in the display here, you can see wherever you hover your mouse, you get this white crosshairs and that tells you the exact frequency that you're dealing with in the top left of the readout. And to the right of that, it tells you the exact note. So for example, if I go ahead and solo out my kick drum here, you can start to get a little bit better idea of the fundamental of the kick drum, but in not too much detail. And that brings me to the settings up here. This cog wheel in the top right, here's three controls in here you're gonna use pretty much all the time. That one is average time, the other is the block size, and then the smoothing. Right now I have the smoothing turned off. Now, if you increase the block size, you're basically gonna get more resolution and more detail. And you'll see now that you can tell exactly where the fundamental of this kick is. And you can also start to see how useful this could be on a piano, guitars, vocals, or whatever. Um, so this fundamental is ringing out you know, right around 52 hertz and at a G sharp. When I first had this kick drum in here, I noticed with Span here that my kick was actually tuned to A. And this song, it's in flats. So I did go ahead and detune the kick drum a half step down to this G sharp, and it does sit better in the mix. So that's one great visual representation here that might help things that you can't necessarily hear. If this were house or EDM music, it might be really obvious that your bass and your kick drum were competing. But, so the block size increase helps with that resolution. If we decrease the average time, we get even more resolution where we can see transients happening much faster. And then the smoothing function, say we go down to a quarter octave, that'll take away some of the messy transient and harmonic overtone information if you don't want it or you don't need it for whatever you're doing. So yeah, this little menu here, this is super useful. Block size, average time, smoothing, you use those pretty much all the time just depending on what you're doing. All right. Now, we're actually going to bring some of that definition back and turn the smoothing back off so I can see all those transients and harmonic overtones. And now I want to show you another awesome feature of the Spectrum Analyzer. On a PC, if you hold down Control and then left-click the mouse, it does this. And now you are soloed in onto a particular band of frequencies. And you can expand or narrow that band while you're still holding left-click on the mouse with scrolling with the mouse. Yeah, very, very useful. So now you can get inside of a mix or a specific track and get a readout on the notes and frequencies of exactly what's going on and you can get hyper-specific. So right up here around 9K, visually my hi-hat looks like it's coming through very dramatically even though it's pretty smooth in the mix, but that's something that can actually maybe help me make decisions of whether or not I want to dial back that hi-hat a little bit. If you let go of the mouse, the full spectrum comes back. And then if you press hold up here, at any time you can press that hold and get a snapshot of your image of what you're looking at. So this is super useful too if you're trying to dive into specific peaks and troughs and see where you have too much energy built up in a mix or maybe you have some room to work with. And I'm gonna give you another example of that here. We're gonna take hold off and hit play. And I'm gonna give my increase the average time and decrease the block size dramatically now and bring some smoothing back on. Now I have a real gentle trend over time. That is super useful for mastering especially, but also for seeing where I have some holes to work with. And right around 2.5K here, 
it's not much happening. That's because the vocals have been removed here from this mix. And then again down here around eight, 900, there's a little space, but that's probably actually because some of this low mid range still needs to be attenuated. Your ears can only hear so much and you always want to trust your ears and mix with your ears, but having a visual is super helpful. And down on the bottom here, another thing I want to show you is if I scroll left, now I'm basically zooming in on the low frequencies here. And this is really helpful because, you know, most people aren't mixing in an acoustically treated room with bass traps and a subwoofer, but even if you are, there's information down here, 30 hertz, 20 hertz and below, that your ears are just not going to be able to hear. And if you want a nice tight low end and everything cleaned up, you're going to want to high pass filter most of that information out. And stay tuned on future videos on clean low end and side chaining and high pass filtering. I am going to get to that. And likewise, if you want to, you can zoom in on the way higher end, and maybe you want to bring that transient and overtone information back in, decrease the average time, increase the block size, remove all of the smoothing, and hit control, left click, and now we're way up in the high end, super hyper detailed, and listening around to exactly where the crash or the ride, if you have one, you know, whatever's going on up here, you can get a really good look at what it is and really hone in and see if there's frequencies that need to be attenuated or that you need to use a dynamic EQ on. So very, very useful tool. And I think you can also start to see how useful this is going to be for getting inside your reference tracks and then getting inside of your own mixes to give your eyes and ears a little bit of a matchup to see what you're actually hearing and seeing is the same. And there's one last feature on here that I want to show you that is super, super useful. Up here at the top where there's a routing menu, you can do some really complex routing with this plugin, which I'm not going to get into. To the right is a drop down for routing, and it's going to default in stereo, which is what we've been looking at this whole time, but there's a mid side option down here. The mid side is going to give you two separate readouts of your mid and side information inside of your mix. So by changing from mid to side and changing the underlay cover, now I'm gonna zoom back out. Now what you have is the mids in your mix are the green and this kind of pinky orange noise, that's all of your side channel. And you can change the colors of these up here to whatever's most comfortable for you. Let me go ahead and change that to a nice dark blue. And now you'll see that we have our side information displayed separately and our mid information. And if we go ahead and add some smoothing and a higher block size and slow this down to more of a trend over time, now I have a really good idea of where and when my side information might be peeking out on top of my mid information and when it does you'll notice that there is a little bit of a red flag color alert there that darker purple that's some side information peeking over the mid information so then I can get right in there take a listen to what's going on in there and I can start soloing out tracks and seeing where those problems are and see if it's something I want to fix so having mid-side readouts and independent control for both your mid and your side, you can match them to be the same, you can set them both differently, however you want. You can configure this plugin to do so many different things to fit your needs of any situation, exactly whatever it is that you're trying to get a visual on. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that answered a lot of questions. Go ahead and download Span and get in there and take a look at it. Put it on your master bus, start soloing out tracks, start playing around with the controls and go through this video a couple times if you need to. It's a very awesome tool to be able to have a spectrum analyzer to have your ears and eyes match in your work that you're doing. So let me know in the comments what you think and thanks for watching.